nice to meet you. And thank you so much for showing up on time. No, oh, I mean that. Well, it's uh, punctuality and showing up is a surprisingly difficult thing for many people. And we can get into more of why that's the case, perhaps a bit later if you would like. <clears throat> but um, before we begin here, do I think you need therapy? Well, that's actually a very profound question. Um, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Um, we'll talk about that. Um, but first... What I like to do begin to begin every session is we want to get ourselves present, relaxed, focused, and grounded, okay? And one of the simplest, most effective ways of doing that <clears throat> is to please put your feet flat on the floor, along with me here, and place your hands just gently in your lap or on your legs and uh, just notice where you may be holding any tension. And we're going to take a deep, calming breath in the nose, out the mouth. And we're going to think of inhaling calmness, relaxation, love, and exhaling negativity, anger, fear, and anxiety. Okay? And yourself more into the room and leaving outside all of the, the mind noise. And last one. Begin. Hi, can you notice your that I take, I'm, I'm very specific about, is the word need. The reality is, <clears throat> is what, do you, what do you need in life? Well, you need food, shelter, love, and a purpose. Like, those are the fundamentals, right? That's what you you need in life. Therapy is a is a tool like my like coaching. Do you follow sports? Olympics. Let's take the Olympics for example. Is there any 
athlete that you can think of in the Olympics that doesn't have a coach. No, I mean, that'd be crazy, right? Every great athlete has a great coach. And it's because, <clears throat> you know, a coach is there to help us see our blind spots and to help us push when we might not really want to, when we start to get a little uncomfortable. The coach can motivate us to actually stretch and grow our comfort zone, right? And a therapist is, uh, my job is simply to listen and hopefully make you more aware of blind spots. Yeah, but do you need me or any other therapist? No, no, I'm here to help, but you don't need me. Does that make sense? So, well, <laughs> you are welcome to leave at any time. I, this is not, this is not court ordered. This is not, you know, your partner wanted you to do it. Well, fair enough. But again, it's not about need. So I feel like you kind of, you kind of don't want to be here. Okay. It's totally fair. Totally fair. Um, but you're here, and you've paid for a session. Shall we give it a go? Okay. Um, so let me ask you a few questions. <clears throat> Are there any areas in life that um, you would like to see expansion? Um, so you said that your your significant other wanted you to take some therapy, okay? And how do you feel like that relationship is going right now? Okay. Hmm. Oh, of course you get in arguments and disagreements sometimes. My wife and I get in arguments and disagreements we don't get in fights, but we definitely have disagreements on a regular basis. And we do sometimes get in fights as well. Yeah. Yeah. On a um, scale of uh, 1 to 10, and you can't say 7, how happy would you say are, how, how happy would you say you are on a daily basis? One to ten, can't say seven. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Um, on a, do you ever experience any depression? Okay. Do you ever experience uh, anxiety? Depression is usually stemmed from us worrying about things in our past that we didn't get done or things that, you know, past mistakes, things like that. Depression is worrying about who we've been and anxiety is living in the fear of the wreckage of an unknown future. Right? So it's anxiety is we're afraid of this happening or that happening. We're afraid that, you know, we're not going to show up in a type of way or, or something negative or bad is going to happen in the future. And depression and anxiety, though, they kind of, they're kind of two halves of the same coin in some ways, right? Because if you're, depressed, you're not feeling motivated, it's hard to, you know, have a positive outlook 
on the future when you're upset about how you've been in the past. And so, you know, <clears throat> you know negativity is, um, um, in, in psychology, we call it uh, neuroticism, okay? Being neurotic is just, it's just negative emotion, is neuroses. And humans, you and me, we are pre-wired to be neurotic. We are pre-wired to focus on the negative. Um, I think the reason for that could be evolutionary, you know. Um, it, you probably needed to know where the lion or the hyenas were. And, like, that was life or death, right? If you didn't know or, yeah, like, that could kill you. Or, like, which plants would kill you, you know, which mushrooms or berries were poisonous or toxic. And, <clears throat> you know, when something good happened, you know, you found a new, you know, you found a new berry bush somewhere. Well, that's nice, and that gave you some sustenance, but it wasn't, it wasn't life or death, right? So a lot of our brains are very much geared to focus on negativity, anger, frustration, you know, I once had somebody tell me that anger is always a mask for vulnerability. And at first, I didn't believe it. I was like, wait a minute. What do you mean anger is always a mask for vulnerability? Sometimes I'm just pissed. I'm angry at somebody for something or something, right? Yeah, but what's underlying that? There's always fear. You're always, you're, you're afraid of something. You're afraid of looking bad. You're afraid of disappointing somebody, right? Like if you get really angry at somebody because they, they cut you off in your car, well, you're actually angry because your life was in danger for a moment. When you're driving a car, you're driving this huge, deadly piece of machinery, right? And we're often going very fast. And the only thing that's dividing us are these little painted lines, little white and yellow lines on the street. And for the most part, it works, right? For the most part, we follow those lines. And most people, most of the time, are pretty pretty good about it. But every now and then, somebody cuts us off, somebody slams on the brakes in front of us, forcing us to slam on the brakes. And what happens is, for a moment there, you got terrified. Rightfully so. Accidents are crazy, insane things, right? And so, you get angry because you just got really, really scared. Now, <clears throat> you can think of it too, like, like road rage. It's also interesting, when you're behind the wheel, it kind of gives you some, like, anonymity, right, in the world. And we often try to treat our cars, you know, like time machines. So if we're running late, we think, well, if I really gun it, to the next thing, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get there. And I mean, depending on where you live, that may be the case. But nine times out of ten, most people, myself, you and me, we live in a city, there's traffic lights, and gunning your car to the next traffic light doesn't actually save you any time. You know what I mean? You, you, you see where I'm getting with that? So, you know, it's very important that when we get, when we find ourselves getting angry, you know, like how often, how often do you find yourself angry? Yeah. Yeah, right. It happens all, yeah, we all get angry, right? And over the next week, you know, I challenge, I offer you uh, a challenge. 
When you find yourself getting angry, try to take a deep breath, just a nice calming breath. And ask yourself, <clears throat> is there something you're actually afraid of that's causing the anger? And this really, really gets magnified with our significant others. You know, when I when I get mad at my wife or mad at uh, she's the best example. <laughs> Cause I spend the most time with her. Um, if I get mad at her, what am I really upset about? Am I upset about the thing that she did? Maybe. Or am I upset because there's something in it that I'm afraid of, whether it be like, maybe I'm afraid that she doesn't respect me. Maybe I'm afraid of letting her down. Maybe I'm afraid of being too much and embarrassing her. Maybe I'm afraid of not being enough and disappointing her, right? But usually, the anger stems from some internal past trauma, you know? And it's the ego. It's our ego trying to be right, trying to look good, trying to... Um, well, those are the two biggies, ironically. Yeah, not looking bad, looking good, being right. Like it's, in my experience, it's shocking, shocking how much breakdown in life occurs around those things. Fear of looking bad, making others wrong looking good and being right. I know. As we like to say, you know, your, uh, your ego is not your amigo. Your ego is always trying to protect you. You know, the ego is always trying to um, prevent you from being made a fool. It's always trying to protect you from uh, looking bad. And sadly, most of our biggest breakdowns happen when we let the ego take over. And if you can really talk to somebody, which you can do, you can absolutely do, when you talk to somebody not from ego to ego, when you talk to somebody from vulnerability to vulnerability, it instantly is a profound change in the conversation. Um, let me give you an example. <clears throat> so, you know, um, you're getting a fight. says, you know, I'm always an example for me, like, oh, you, you forgot to take out the trash, and, you know, like, I know you do this around the house when you do that, but, like, that's the thing that I kind of like, that's like your job, and I rely on you to do that, and, and it just like, like, gosh, you know, like, you never do this, you know. That's another thing you always know when somebody's <clears throat> speaking from ego. They'll use um, uh, big language. You always do this. You never do this. You're always this way. You never do that. And when you use maximizing language like that, that's ego. Then what they're really saying is, I'm afraid you don't, you don't, I'm afraid you don't love me or respect me. And the way I would know you did love and respect me is if you did X, Y, and Z, right? And then I would know that you loved me and that you're not going to leave me. But it doesn't come out like that. It comes out as, you never do this. You always do this, right? And if you 
respond, what do you mean? I'm sorry, you know, I didn't do it this one time. I'm sorry, I didn't take out the trash this one time. I forgot, blah, blah, blah. And you start making excuses. And then all of a sudden, it's just ego to ego. You're upset because you're afraid that they're disappointed with you and they might not love you or they might leave you. And, <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, we're just in this egoic breakdown of each side being afraid of not receiving the other person's love and affection. And it comes out as snark, snark, right? And that's just a very simple example. But basically every breakdown we've had, like, like if there's lying involved, you know, one thing about my wife and I, we have rules. One of the rules is um, no name calling. I'm never allowed to call her like a bee or like something. We just don't name call, okay? It's never useful. It's never valuable. It shows lack of respect. We don't do it. No name calling. <clears throat> Another rule is you're not allowed to threaten to leave. You're not allowed to threaten to leave, okay? And no lying. That's a huge one. Because, you know, trust is like, it's like a bucket with a really slow drip, right? Every day, just drip, drip, drip into the bucket, and the bucket, the trust bucket, fills up, right? Fills up slowly. And then one day, you can just walk over and kick it, and all that trust, gone. And you can't just fill it back up quickly. Drip. You gotta put it back under the dripping faucet and it's gotta slowly drip, drip, drip back full again, right? <clears throat> and why does that matter so much for people? Why is trust so important? Because everyone is afraid of being left alone. Everyone is afraid of looking bad. me do. It's part of being human. Nothing you can do about it. All you can do is get better at recognizing when you're, when you're in your ego. So, do you need therapy? No. Do I think therapy can have profound and amazing impacts on your life? Of course I do. I love, I love being a therapist. I love listening to people, and, and I like pushing people in their comfort zones. Yeah. So, you know, we can push our comfort zones and the things that feel really scary right now. Well, maybe in a day or a week or a month. They won't seem so scary. You know. It's been really nice to meet you, and kind of look forward to seeing you next week. Yeah. Good. Well, I hope so. Um, wonderful. Uh, this, this time works for you. Great. Let's pencil this in. At the same time next week. <clears throat> in your life between now and then where you catch yourself getting angry and when you catch yourself getting angry ask yourself what am I really afraid of that's causing me to be angry and really think about that okay just notice it write it down if you want to alright alright look forward to seeing you next week